Welcome to everyone. I'm Jim Johnson, and to assist me with today's match commentary, I'm sitting next to that famous ex-player, Bob Biffin. Yeah, here I am, Jim. Well, I hope you're settled in and ready for the match. Yes, I think I'll just slip out and get myself a small beverage before the kickoff. <laughs> Quick glance at the player stats, and you soon realize that these two teams are years apart. <sighs> Bob, seems like it's getting hot here. Uh, indeed, Jim. Some sweltering heat rolling in over the stadium. Will be interesting to see how many of the players will collapse after this drive. Today, I interviewed Ripper Bulgrot, the Trolls Super Champion. Interesting. And I can tell you that he's as violent off the pitch as on it. <laughs> he's skinned alive, my colleague from Elf Magazine. What do you expect when you put an elf next to a troll? It's nothing personal, just an instinctive reaction. <laughs> <laughs> Blood Bowl annals are littered with the stories of teams who've gone bust with crippling debts. And with the cost of doping and bribery on the rise, the problem won't be going away. Is really strong. Do you think they have some troll blood in them? Mm, could be. Or maybe his opponent shouldn't speak that way about the family. Yeah. 
Did you know that the Berserkers are selected from the thirstiest Norse players? Uh, no. Yes, the head coach tells the team that they have run out of beer, and the one that enters the most furious rage becomes the new team Berserker. They run out of beer in Norse teams? Of course not, Bob. The head coaches just tell the players that if they're low on Berserkers. <laughs> Did you hear that the Orchard Raiders lost their last match against the Dancers? Dancers? You mean War Dancers? <laughs> on the nose. Sure was, Jim. It's broken now. <laughs> Blood Bowl is reputedly the toughest of all sports. Uh, so they say, but it really only comes down to taking a few hits. <sighs> Can't say much about that. Full blooded, but perfectly legal. He sent him down for a chat with the Astro Granite. He made picking that ball up look easy.
Orcs have always gone for a power game. And you have to realize that it was only recently that they discovered the purpose of the ball during a match. Today's insight comes from Jaime Schnibel, coach and owner of the Goblin Lowdown Lads team. In yesterday's Spike magazine, he said that Blood Bowl was like war. No winners, just survivors. Oh, now that's deep. About as deep as his team's position in the rankings. Do you think he'll be able to get up after that blow, Jim? Oh, yes. He's not the sort to stay down. And don't forget, children, don't try and do this at home. Remember, these are seasoned professionals. Well, one of them is anyway. Finally, there's one that lets his biceps do the talking. Yeah, but from his opponent's point of view, it was a short conversation. quality required of an orc is to be able to hit hard and, if possible, not to think. The latter is considered a nasty flaw.
I bet those yetis don't like playing the dungeon ball, Bob. That's right, Jim. Some Norse teams downright refused to play in that cup, claiming it to be inhumane. That's strange, Bob. Didn't figure any Norse team to be humane. The ball changes hands. That'll do nicely. Ouch! That punch knocked his teeth down his throat. Yes, Jim. That's never a nice sight. It is a violent sport. <laughs> the first quality required of an orc is to be able to hit hard and, if possible, not to think. The latter is considered a nasty flaw. Generously. Well, he took a bad yeah. turn, and now that poor player is dead. Well, duh. Poetry in motion. What we'd like to see more, more often. often. Corruption so widespread that the referees guild has set up rules concerning where, when, and how one can accept a bribe. Under an agreement signed last season, clubs are not allowed to offer less than the going rate. one that won't be coming back in a hurry. He'll have a bit of trouble blowing his nose from now on.
teams that have simply disappeared after being abandoned by their supporters. Let's say that some teams who haven't won a match for several years have been tied up by their fans and thrown into rubbish containers. It's the only way to end a downward spiral. Did you hear about the evil Gits? The team that is made up of the mix of evil players? Their fans won the most evil supporters of the year award. Fully merited from what I've seen. I don't know if he really liked that uppercut. He may not have liked it, but he certainly ate it. <sighs> I can tell you straight, that hurts. Oh, what a bad Six idea. Out. The player dodges the buck, but receives a dozen from angry fans. We won't see that player for some time. me of when I took Griff to bits in the 91 final against Reitland. Oh, yeah. You kneecapped him. The referee's guild has decided to hire a bodyguard for each game. Another brilliant idea. And just how effective will one bodyguard be against a stadium full of supporters? True. Could be a bit one-sided.
talking with the fish. And they clearly know how to get heard. Berserkers, yetis, oof workers. I bet you like this, Jim. Of course, Bob. To be brutally honest, I always enjoy a pack of raving maniacs. Spoken as a true Blood Bowl fan, Jim. <laughs> Like there was some bad blood between those two, eh, Bob? Yeah, Jim. Something to do with swapped body parts. I bet that hurt. Good job his nose got in the way. Yeah, otherwise he'd have got it full in the face. Yes! It's a great spectacle, Bob! Just look at the fans. They're red hot. A majority of supporters reckon that the League should take measures to prevent the small minority of peaceful fans from watching a match from the terraces. They've got a point. If they don't want to join in the fun, they might as well stay home and watch it on cable vision. Appreciate it. He won't appreciate the gaping wound either. Go, 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 go! Down, Bob, down, boy. Just take your pills. Oh, Ejected like a wisp of straw. He won't live long. You're telling me. The hooligans are gonna have a field day. face. The other guy couldn't dodge that one. A recent medical report stated that cerebral hemorrhages were less frequent in Blood Bowl players. Amazing when you come to think of it. Not really, when you consider that brains are also less frequent. physical as this, the player is really in the right place. Exactly. It's really ugly. That's what I throw as an amateur. Yes. Splotch.
That's one regulation clobbering. Just look at the way his feet and hands are twitching. The punch is still echoing round his body. <laughs> Yesterday, I interviewed Ripper Bullshot, the troll super champion. Interesting. And I can tell you that he's as violent off the pitch as on it. He skinned alive my colleague from Elf Magazine. What do you expect when you put an elf next to a troll? It's nothing personal, just an instinctive reaction. Already half time? I just hope they come out for the second half with a more combative spirit. Yeah, the coaches will have fine tuned their dosages of medication. have always gone for a power game. And you have to realize that it was only recently that they discovered the purpose of the ball during a match. Here we go again for another bloodbath. and then followed by a clean uppercut. Well done! Well, that's one with a good reason to go see the apothecary. Yep, looks like he's gonna need a good one. Norse teams out there, Jim, is the Vinheim Valkyries, more recently known as Vinheim Rampagers. Perhaps you could tell the fans why they changed their name, Bob. Sure can, Jim. They went into hiding after they pillaged and burned down Skalgrim and Hoist, the only sponsor that withdrew their sponsorship up to this day. Face 
job is a lot cheaper than a plastic surgeon. I don't know if he planned it, but it won't do him any harm in the looks department. see much of the heroes of law these days. I don't know. For any spectators who aren't aware, the heroes of law hope to show the world a better way by honest, strategic play on the pitch. It's probably a good thing we don't see them. in motion. What we'd like to see... presence or not of a little R may cause less trauma than watching what's happening to that player. Did you know that well in advance of the match, the Berserkers will often start quaffing flagons of ale before whipping themselves into a frenzy? That can sure be useful, Bob. We should try that someday. We better leave that to the professionals, Jim. You already look a little pale. Get it? Pale? Uh, never mind. Oh. Singing him a lullaby. Senseless. You're assuming then that he had something between his ears to begin with. Beer swilling, spear brandishing, yeti wrestling lunatics. And that's just the apothecaries, Jim. He checked that move. Made him look stupid, you mean? Wow! I can tell you straight, that hurts.
and sidekick to the face. Let's see that again in slow motion. Reminds me of when I took great wins in the 91 final against Reitland. Oh, yeah. You kneecapped him. Wizards have not always been able to cast spells safely from behind the sidelines. Were you playing at the time in an Albion League, a second division that prohibited spell casting from off the pitch? Oh, yes. They were great times. I remember fans traveling to Gamble just to see how well Wizards stood up to the mad charge of a raving Blood Bowl star. The noise created by a sizzling fireball, followed by the characteristic sound of the snapping of a wizard's neck. And don't forget, children, don't try and do this at home. Remember, these are seasoned professionals. Well, one of them is anyway. Look over there! Some cute little elf beauties are selling big moot sandwiches in the stands. And so now you like big moot sandwiches? No way! Big white arrow that was pointing towards the opposition's end zone. A travesty! We were just beginning to enjoy ourselves and they give up! It really isn't sport! Thank goodness the supporters have no truck with that kind of nonsense. Just look at them go at one another! Too true, Bob. We might as well commentate on this.